Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my review for Spider-Man No Way Home. So, you may be wondering, why is this coming out now? Why did I wait so long for this? Did, you, did I just see the movie? No. I actually saw this on opening weekend. Um, the reason why I have decided to wait to do this is spoilers, basically. I, I did not feel... Like, I could really talk about this movie without talking about the spoilers. Because this movie is reliant on everything it brings to the table. And that includes stuff that would be considered massive plot details. So, I wanted to wait. I wanted to give it some time for people to have seen it. For people to have been able to not have to worry about spoilers anymore um so i could talk about this as openly as possible but just as a warning for anybody watching this if you have not seen spider spider-man no way home i would suggest clicking off of this video because there will be spoilers notable big huge plot spoilers for spider-man no way home in this video I will not be holding back. I will be talking about all the kinds of twists and turns and big relevant plot details. So if, if you wish to remain spoiler free and have not seen the movie yet, please click off. If you have seen the movie and or are even just okay with hearing about what happens, then stay tuned because we're going to be talking about it. So the general plot of spider-man no way home is that following the events of uh the last movie the last spider-man one specifically um peter's identity is revealed to the world thanks to mysterio and j jonah jameson his identity as spider-man is revealed everyone knows who he is and he has to deal with that so he goes to Doctor Strange, trying to get him to erase everybody's knowledge that he's Spider-Man. And Strange, well, he goes to Doctor Strange to see if he can do anything, and that's what Doctor Strange suggests that they do, really. Um, and in the end, Strange agrees. So he's doing the spell and everything, but Peter keeps adding stuff in, like, oh, we can't have MJ forget who I am. We can't have Ned forget who I am. Aunt May should know who I am. And because he keeps adding things in and keeps, like, messing with it, the spell go goes awry. It messes up. This causes holes to tear into the fabric of the multiverse, allowing for villains of Spider-Man movies past to come in to this mcu universe um which is not a huge spoiler in and of itself because obviously that was in the trailers and everything but like we see the full extent of it in the film and how it all goes down and the exact ramifications in a way that the trailers don't really um express as easily uh even though trailers nowadays like including these ones do tend to reveal a little more than they probably should. Um, so we get into now the big stuff. So first off, I want to talk about the story. The, the story of Peter trying to fix this big issue that has come up and just creating another bigger one because of it because with these villains coming through it starts causing a lot of trouble we have the likes of doc ock and green goblin causing massive danger to people we have electro stealing electricity from from a not a power plant uh i don't know what it's what it would be called i i, I don't know how to it's like one of those little areas kind of like separated out from uh the, the 
separated out from like uh communities and stuff it has all the electrical equipment and stuff in it uh it, it's it's featured in the iron giant too like it's in that movie as well and and i i don't know what they're actually referred to as um but you know it's like that little like air i think it's actually in um telltale's the walking dead as well but you know what i'm talking about either way so he's siphoning the energy we have sandman come in and everything as well and it's just like everyone's here it's it's smash bros for spider-man <laughs> um but so we have all these villains coming and so everything is going wrong you have an influx of dangerous villains attacking all at once and so Peter starts to collect them. He starts to collect them like baseball cards and bring them into uh, the sanctum in order to keep, you know, New York safe <laughs> from all of these villains. And eventually they escape, things go to shit because Peter wants to try and cure them and unfortunately, Green Goblin takes over Norman's mind completely because, you know, technically there are two minds within, two consciousnesses within there because of how Green Goblin is portrayed in, in this continuity. Um, so he takes over and things go even worse and it, it all basically escalates into what is a not entirely shocking moment but still kind of a sad one and that's when goblin kills aunt may and it's like it's obviously a a, pl a play on the entire you know uncle ben dying in front of peter and everything like she even gives the with great power comes great responsibility line it's really sad. It, it's the same kind of deal, but since Uncle Ben isn't a part of this with the MCU, um, they had to do it with Aunt May. And it makes sense, and it works, and everything worked out. So, yeah. But this causes Peter to be kind of vengeful, and just kind of, like, really wanting it wanting to take out the villains instead of helping them now luckily ned and um and michelle end up accidentally bringing in andrew garfield and toby mcguire's spider-man to, and they, they definitely lend a hand in helping like tom holland's <laughs> in kind of coming back from that pain um and this was like this was a spo this is a spoiler technically because it's not in any of the trailers or advertising or anything but it was so bloody obvious like everyone knew they were coming back andrew garfield tried so hard to to lie about it and hide it and say like oh no i i don't i'm not in this movie Oh, you see that picture of me like on the set? That's photoshopped. He tried so hard, but it was so blatantly obvious that they were going to be back. Like they're not going to bring back the villains and not bring back Toby and Andrew as well. Um, so they brought them back. And the th we have the three Spider-Man fighting the villains together. And they eventually do help MCU Peter into realizing that he needs to go back to healing them and they all work together and they do they heal the villains um it's a great action scene and my favorite moment of the movie happens during this action scene it's when michelle is falling mcu peter jumps down to save her but is intercepted by the goblin and so mark webb peter andrew garfield um, I say Mark Webb because it's the Mark Webb Amazing Spider-Man movies. He has to save her instead, and it's a, it's very much a parallel on how he couldn't save Gwen Stacy in his movies. And it's 
actually really cool because of that. It's a really emotional moment, and it's like, the theater I was in actually cheered at that. Like, that was, that was pretty awesome. Um, I mean, the theater definitely reacted to a lot of things, but that was like a big notable moment. <laughs> Um, and, and it's just, it's because of the, obviously, the connection Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker has to that kind of moment that makes it so important. Like, we even see his Peter start to cry because of it, because of how much it means to him to have actually saved the girl this time. <laughs> it's really, it's really great. But they end up putting everything back to normal, but at the cost of not just everyone forgetting that Peter Parker's Spider-Man, but everyone forgetting Peter Parker. Peter has to sever his connections with literally everyone. He has to give up everything. His relationship with Michelle... His friendship with Ned, with Happy Hogan, with the Avengers, with everything. He gives up his entire identity and everyone's knowledge of him in order to set things right. And, and so the ending of the movie is very bittersweet. The villains were saved. Everyone went back to their universes. But Peter has nothing. He's completely lost everything in this. And more Tom Holland Spider-Man MCU films have been ordered, so there are there is going to be another trilogy, so it's going to be interesting to see how they work with this. But I really feel like this was a very bittersweet but fitting ending to his story here with this trilogy. It was really the only thing that could be done. And honestly, with all the mistakes he made in the film, there needed to be consequences. And this is kind of the biggest consequences possible. And he could have reminded Michelle who he was or tried to jog that memory somehow, but he chose not to for her sake because it would be better. And it, it, again, it just, it really did hit hard because of that. But let's talk about the characters specifically and the actors that portray them obviously the returning characters from the previous mcu spidey films have been great tom holland zendaya the, they, their roles are all just as good the acting is just as good as you would expect but what about the characters from previous spider-man films well they're honestly just as amazing as they've always been uh, Toby Maguire and Andrew Garfield are phenomenal in this film. Um, there's this one moment during the climax where Andrew Garfield is kind of down on himself. And Toby looks at him and says, no, you're amazing. And very much tells him like that he's worth it. And you know 100% that is, that is in reference to how Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man films were received by the public compared to Tobey Maguire's at the time. And then eventually even the MCU ones. The Amazing Spider-Man films were received really poorly. And so with Tobey giving him this ad affirmation in this scene, it's very much an affirmation of you're worth it. You're Spider-Man too, and we love you. And the fan reaction to that scene, like to this movie even, has been amazing as well because the fans have come in support of Andrew Garfield like never before. 
there have always been fans who liked Andrew. There have always been fans who liked the Amazing Spider-Man films who have supported them when everybody else was like saying, oh no, these films are crap. But the outpouring of support and love for Andrew Garfield and his take on Spider-Man and everything have been a lot bigger than ever. And so I, I definitely really love how that turned out. Um, the villains are great too. Willem Dafoe, like in what, his 60s, I believe, is is still doing his own stunts for Goblin and, and actually insisted on it. And on top of that, he's not lost it at all. Willem Dafoe is still an amazing actor who does an amazing job reinvigorating this character. It feels like Norman Osborn, like the Goblin from the original Sam Raimi Spider-Man film. And same with Alfred Molina. Back is Doc Ock. This is like, this is Doc Ock. This is the villain everyone remembers from what many consider to be the best Spider-Man film. This is, it, it's amazing. It's beautiful to see them back. To see um, Thomas Hayden Church back as Sandman. To see Jamie Fox even back as Electro. Reese Eifens as Lizard. All of them do great. All of them, like, just really own their roles in this film. Obviously, Willem Dafoe steals every scene he's in, and he's definitely the best of them um but none of the others fall behind they all shine um and, and it's phenomenal to see that it's really wonderful and you even get a little cameo in the in the credit scenes with um tom hardy uh as eddie brock and venom and that's really fun he, he, it's very short, but it's really fun seeing him. And it's like, oh yeah, that's Eddie Brock and Venom from the Venom movies. <laughs> um, so it's like, okay, that's that's a thing. Um, and it's connecting to the post credit scene from Venom, Let There Be Carnage. So, um, But all the villains, all the returning and just legacy characters did a phenomenal job in this. They all made it seem like they hadn't even been away for 20 years, as a lot of them had from the uh, Sam Raimi films. And not as long, but still quite a while from the Mark Webb films. They, they, they haven't really lost a beat, and some of them have even gotten better. Like, Jamie Foxx unquestionably is better in this film as Electro than he was in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. And I thought he was good in Amazing Spider-Man 2. Don't get me wrong. I liked him in that movie. I liked that movie. I might be in the minority there, but I did. <laughs> um, but yeah, he was unquestionably better here. All of them did such a great job. Um, and and I, I really loved how it went down. Uh, but of course you have to talk about J. Jonah Jameson as well, because even though it's not the Jameson from the Sam Raimi verse, it is still uh, J.K. Simmons playing him. He doesn't have a huge role in the film, but when he's on screen, it's like, oh yeah, that's Jameson. That's J.K. Simmons just doing his best to be awesome, as he always is. <laughs> it's like, he, he's not as relevant to the movie as you would think, like, he's definitely a major part of it. I mean, he kind of kickstarts all of this. But he's not as heavily relevant as you would expect him to be. Um, there's also this, this subplot in the film about uh, Peter, Ned, and Michelle trying to get into college and having trouble because of Peter's identity being revealed and everything. And, and that comes into play at the end as well when that's why he doesn't reacquaint himself with Michelle because he sees that she's getting into into her dream college and he's just going to let her have that. He feels that if he brought her back into things, it would ruin everything. 
So again, really bittersweet ending, but yeah. Um, obviously, the soundtrack is great. Obviously, all the visuals are fantastic, like, as you would expect. Um, Doc Ock's arms this time are done by CG instead of practical, but honestly, it's not that big a deal. It's, it's really not. You, you think it would, like, make, like, this massive, like, shift in just the quality of it in comparison to the original Spider-Man 2 film he was in, but it really doesn't make that much of a difference. Um, yeah, the practical effects originally were cool, but I think that the CG works, honestly, just as well here. Um, and, and other characters who are in this too, like Hogan and Doctor Strange and everything, they, they did a great job as well. Um, and obviously the big reveals when Andrew Garfield and then Toby did arrive in the film were huge. Like definitely two of the biggest moments of the movie um and it's like again i i just when when andrew garfield's first like came out and then pulled off the mask to reveal it was andrew garfield it's like i i was just laughing like i, I was sitting there like not like super out loud or anything i was holding it in but i i was kind of laughing because again it's really just funny to me how damn hard he tried to hide the fact that he was in this. How damn hard he tried to deny that he was going to be in this film. He tried so fucking hard. And it was so obvious that he was lying. It was so blatantly obvious that they were going to be in this, him and Toby. Like, duh, no shit. It, it was the worst kept secret because it's like, it was literally 100% that they were going to be in this. There was no room for doubt. And yet, he tried so hard. Apparently, he even hid it from uh, from uh, Emma, Emma Stone, I think. The actress who played Gwen Stacy in the Amazing Spider-Man films. He even hid it from her. Um, his former co-star from those movies. And it's like, my God, dude. Like, I don't see how anyone ever could have believed no. you or ever could have even questioned if this was going to be the case. It's like, again, the instant the old villains were seen, it's like the very instant they were seen, you knew Toby and Andrew would be back. It was, again, 100% guaranteed. Um, and yeah, they were great in it. It truly felt like a love letter to Spider-Man films, all Spider-Man films, um, of the, you know, the live-action Spider-Man films here. <laughs> um, and it felt like just a love letter to Spider-Man fans in general, who grew up either with the Raimi films or the Mark Webb films, or even now with the MCU ones. And... As a huge Spider-Man fan, it's like everything in this movie was phenomenally done. It was spectacular. It was amazing. It was everything I wanted it to be and more. They nailed everything about this film. It was, it was that excellently done. And as you may have seen from my... Uh, top 10 movies of 2021 list that I posted a couple weeks back, I think. Um, it was my number one of 2021 films that I saw last year. And also, I would say it was my favorite film that, in general that I saw last year. Just in personal favorites. Obviously, I think the overall best one I saw is still The Green Mile, which, I, again one of the only two films I consider perfect. But this one was my favorite, just on a personal level, because I am a big Spider-Man fan. I always have been. He's always been one of my favorites, um, right up there with the likes of Wonder Woman and Batman. And so this was definitely just an amazing movie for me. And honestly, I, I put it right up there with... Um, 
into the Spider-Verse as my favorite Spider-Man and favorite superhero film, period. Spider-Verse was my favorite superhero film, but this is right up there with it. And honestly, I can't, I still can't, um, like, over a month later, determine which one I actually like more. I think it's been over a month, around a month later. I still can't determine which one I actually like more. Because Spider-Verse was just so good in so many ways, so creative, so important in a lot of ways. And it just handled its medium excellently. But so did this. <laughs> so I really don't know which one I like more. So I just kind of like put them as a tie. And I, I still can't determine it because they're just so, they're both just so amazingly good. Um, but yeah, they are my favorite superhero films. And honestly, I feel like I'm starting to sway on who my favorite superhero is. I've said I've said it for a long time. My favorite superhero has been Batman. And I still stand by that I love Batman as a superhero. Especially with his rogues gallery. But I'm starting to think maybe I might like Spider-Man a little bit more. In, in fact, I'd say it's very likely... Um, I don't know for 100% certain though. Maybe we'll, maybe I'll be able to make a more concrete decision after The Batman comes out later this year with, uh, Battinson. <laughs> I am actually excited for that, uh, Battinson jokes aside. Um, I am actually excited for that film. It looks good. Um, but yeah, yeah. I'm hoping for some good things coming in the future from the MCU. I'm excited for Multiverse of Madness. The Moon, the Moon Knight trailer came out recently, and I saw that. That looked exciting and pretty interesting. Um, and then there's other stuff coming this year as well, other movies, other shows. I'm still super hyped for Miss Marvel. That's the big one for me right now <laughs> in terms of the shows. Um, but... But we'll see how it goes. I mean, I still need to figure out what happened in Hawkeye because I actually haven't seen that and I really hadn't planned on it. Pretty much, I think at this point, the only way I would see it is if someone chose it as a donation reward because I've never been a fan of Hawkeye, especially in the MCU. So it's like, yeah, not really on my list to see. It's the same reason I haven't seen the Black Widow movie. I'm just not interested. I don't like Black Widow. <laughs> um, but I've seen everything else the MCU has released so far. Um, and we'll kind of go from there and see where it takes us for other stuff going forward. Um, but tell me in the comments below, what did you think of Spider-Man No Way Home? Uh, what did you think about the returning uh, characters and all the big heavy moments in this movie um the scenes like such as where andrew garfield catches michelle and where toby praises him and stuff like that what did you think of all the andrew garfield love the so deserved andrew garfield love because he's also an amazing actor i'm gonna plug it here because i'm always gonna plug this if i can if you haven't seen it go on to netflix and watch the movie Tick, Tick, Boom. It's it's about... It's a it's a it's an adaption of a play that was written by the same guy who wrote Rent. And it's about that guy's life. It's about the guy who... It's, a, it's written by and about the guy who created Rent. Andrew Garfield does amazing it. The music is great. Lin-Manuel Miranda directed it. So it's like, you know it's going to be great. <laughs> it's a fantastic film. Definitely check it out. Um, Andrew Garfield's amazing in it. Um, and uh, Vanessa Hudgens is in it too. Um, but yeah, I love the Andrew Garfield love. Tell me what you thought about Spider-Man No Way Home and all the Andrew Garfield love and everything else down in the comments below. Sorry it took so long to get this review out, and mostly this review was just, like, me sharing my general thoughts, but that's how I like to review. I, I, I don't get very 
analytical because I'm not that kind of person. I, I just like to share my thoughts and what I felt about it. So tell me you, yours down in the comments below. Thank you so much for tuning in. And for now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See you all next time.